I consider myself a logophile, that is, someone who loves learning new words, but I feel as though this has made it more difficult for me to communicate than one might imagine. The reason I say that is because by focusing more on bigger words, I feel like I have missed out on the foundations, on the fundamentals of words, of vocabulary. For one, not everybody is going to understand those words. In fact, most people might not understand those words. And two, I have a much more difficult time expressing myself with more common words. So whenever the bigger words don't come to me or whenever I need to explain further than that, I am a little stuck, you know? So this makes communication a little bit more difficult. This is something that I've come to realize more recently, which has revealed to me that learning new words, as helpful as that can be, because it does help me to understand more intelligent speakers. I have really no problem at all understanding when very intelligent people are using very sophisticated words. But when I'm expressing myself, I find that I need to do a lot more, especially in terms of the fundamentals, than simply learning big words. When it comes to conversations with other people, I think that is probably my biggest shortcoming. I haven't spent as much time communicating with other people ever since I was little, really, because of how introverted I am. So naturally, I haven't built some of those, you know, conversational skills that one might develop as they get older. So I think that is one kind of low hanging fruit that I could definitely work on to improve on my conversational skills. Recording myself has been such a huge way for me to improve. I've already noticed myself improve significantly over the past year or so simply by watching myself and being more aware of the mistakes that I make. As I keep saying in so many of my other videos, I think communication is such a powerful way to exist in this world, right? Like you need not have any money, you need not have any influence or status. Simply by being a great communicator, you could really elevate yourself in so many domains of life, whether it's in your career, in your personal relationships, in just everything. Another point that I wanted to mention as far as the big words, using big words versus using more common words, is that tension between them, when and where to use big words. This is something that I have thought about a lot over the years, and I'm not quite sure I've come to any definitive conclusion about when, which is more appropriate, right? Like, do I just use big words irrespective of who it is that I'm communicating with? Or should I try to make my speech more tailored to the person that I'm speaking with? And that is not as easy as it might seem because sometimes you have to do more. You know, you have to, it requires more work of you to change words while speaking. So that adds another layer of complexity to conversations that can be avoided if one is more skilled at it. But not being as skilled as I would like to be, it's something that I think I have to be more intentional about. And so I've tried to figure out when exactly do I do that? When exactly do I feel comfortable using bigger words versus using more colloquial words? And what I've come to realize, or one thing that I think can help me and anybody else who's watching this, is really to try to know your audience, right? I think most of the time, common words are more than sufficient. You just have to be precise enough. And it's also worth pointing out that common words are relative, right? It always depends on who you're talking to. Some words might be very common to a certain population of people, but to a different population, it might not be as common. So we're constantly having to adjust and adapt to our audience. And I think the most skilled communicators are the ones who are best at adapting accordingly. Got it. Let's dig a bit deeper. Uh, one strategy you might find useful is code switching which is the practice of shifting between different languages or language styles depending on the context. This isn't just about big words versus small words, but also about tone, formality, and cultural references. It can help you connect better with diverse audiences. Another tip is to ask for feedback. Uh, after a conversation, ask trusted friends or colleagues how your language choices impacted their understanding. This can provide real-world insights that you might not catch on your own. Also, consider active listening. 
Pay attention not just to what you say, but how your audience reacts. If they look confused or disengaged, it might be a cue to simplify your language. Finally, practice makes perfect. The more you engage in conversations with different people, the better you'll get at gauging the appropriate level of complexity in your language. It's about building intuition over time. I don't think active listening and good listening skills can be over-exaggerated. I think that is such an important part of communication, even speaking, that is very underappreciated and undertaught, and something that I am definitely um, hoping to get better at myself. Um, as far as code switching, um, I've heard that term recently, but I kind of forget what it means. So you're describing it as the adaptation to different conversations. And that adaptation is not just in the types of words that we're using, whether they're big or small, but also in our tone, our inflection, and other subtleties that go along with communication. Is that what code switching is? Yes, that's exactly what code switching is. It's adapting your language, tone, and style to fit different contexts and audiences. It can involve switching between formal and informal language, adjusting your tone to be more relatable or authoritative, and using cultural references that resonate with your audience. For example, you might speak differently uh, with your friends than you would in a professional setting. It's about being flexible and responsive to the social cues around you. Mastering this skill can greatly enhance your effectiveness as a communicator. I can definitely see that even when it comes to different accents, I notice that and different accents and jargons, I notice that the way that people speak naturally changes even when it's not intentional, depending on who it is that they're talking to. But I think to your point, by being a little more intentional about it, we can hone in on those skills and better and be better able to relate to other people. I have felt though that code switching can feel a bit disingenuous, right? Especially when I'm talking to other black people who have a more Southern accent. I've always felt as though it's just not my style. I do think it has a purpose. I do think that it's uh, useful depending on who it is that you're interacting with and something that we should try to improve on. So yeah, I, I will definitely take note of that and and try to be try to be more intentional about working on it. I totally get what you're saying. Code switching can feel disingenuous if it feels forced or unnatural. It's a balance between being authentic and adapting to your audience. The key is to find a way to adapt, adapt that still feels true to yourself. Regarding finding the right words, sometimes simpler is better. It keeps your message clear and relatable. Uh, it's great that you're aware of these nuances in communication. Being mindful and practicing will definitely help you strike the right balance. Keep experimenting with different approaches and you'll find what works best for you. One last note that communicating with an AI like this is such an amazing way to improve, right? Not only does it provide me so much information about my own vocabulary and the, you know, the way just giving me that opportunity to conversate for as long as I want and be as responsive as a human being, right? They're just getting better and better. The, the, their ability to replicate that is so, so important that I think anybody trying to improve their conversational skills who's not naturally very extroverted can definitely use as a substitute. That's not to say we should not still try to conversate with other people, but it is to say that as far as substitutes go, there's really no better way to go about it than AIs these days. On that note, I will go ahead and end it here. I wonder what your thoughts are on that dichotomy between big words and small words. Have you ever had the same questions about when to use big words versus small words? And also when it comes to learning big words, do you see the point that I'm making about how learning big words can actually take away from the flow of conversation? Because we are more, we are not as strong in the fundamentals as we might be. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. That's a fantastic closing thought. Um, using AI to practice communication can be incredibly helpful, especially for introverts or anyone looking to improve their conversational skills. It provides a safe and responsive environment to practice, learn, and grow. Hope your viewers find this video insightful and useful. Looking forward to seeing your next one.